Hi, my name is Vivian Phillips. Uh, I breed Basset Griffon Vendée and Grand, although I do do the Petits as well. I brought the Grand Basset um, into the country in 1989, and in those days they had to come through quarantine. Um, since then, I've tried to establish the breed in this country with the help of other breeders, um, and I show, and I have also shown abroad quite a lot with a, a little bit of success. At the moment, I have about 18 Grand Basset. The Grand Basset is a large hound, but on shortened legs. He's longer in body than he is on leg, but not as long as a Basset hound in comparison to his height. He has a noble head with a longer muzzle and longer ears than the Petit Basset, and also a longer tail. He's very, very strong in bone with excellent tight feet, which he has to have, because if he didn't have good feet, an hour's hunting in the rough terrain of the Vendée, which is where they were bred to hunt, he'd be lame and no use at all. They come in any hound colour and white. Um, the tails are always white, certainly at the tips, so you can see them. Um, and the, some are very, very dark tricolour, and some are lemon and white which is a pale lemony colour. The main part of the coat should be wiry. They should have a nice eyebrow over the eyes, but their eyes should not be obstructed by hair. So you should be able to see the large eyes. The Grand Basset is bred down from a large hound bred in France, called a Grand Griffon Vendien, about the size of a very large otter hound. He was bred down to a shortened leg, which is where the word Basset comes in, um, mainly because the French king at the time, many hundreds of years ago, was rather fat and kept falling off his horse, so they decided to try and hunt them on foot. What they did when they bred the size down was, if they were born small, they called them Petit Basset, and hence the larger ones were Grand Basset. But in 1976, they completely separated the two breeds. They're extremely fast, bred to bring down a hare or a deer, and they can, or they will go out into the undergrowth, jumping over anything in front of them and bringing back the deer or the hare or even the rabbit towards you, and the huntsman then will shoot them. I always say that the Grand Basset Griffon Vendien is a large hound on shortened legs. He thinks before he does most things. He's a, they're highly intelligent and they don't always rush forward um, like some of uh, their cousins. The Petits are much more jumping at you without actually thinking first. The Grand Basset was bred to hunt, and he will, but he also wants to be part of a pack. He actually will treat the family as his pack very, very quickly and become part of the family. So they live very happily in ones, although they also like the company of another dog. They're extremely affectionate. They're very willing to please. A lot of people say, oh, the Basset breeds are stubborn. I don't actually find them stubborn. I think that they want to do things, but if you ask them to run and fetch something and they bring it back, the chances are they won't go again because they think, what is the point? She's only going to chuck it again. Some of them will happily retrieve and bring back. Just depends. My grandchildren are brilliant at training them to give a paw and lie down and all these sort of things, and they're very, very, very quick to learn. And they love to be active and part of family life. The Grand Basset will certainly bark if people come. They'll bark or give tongue, as we say, when they're hunting. And they will let you know if something's around they don't like the look or sound of. But they don't just bark and bark and bark for no reason. I have to say, this year we've had some brave squirrels in the garden. And they sit in a tree above my dogs and have driven them absolutely mad. And they've been barking at the squirrels, but on the whole, if there's nothing around, they're quite laid back about life and they don't just bark for no reason. They're good with children. However, it really very much depends as well on the children. I would 
always advise that they're extremely careful on how the small child handles the dog. Mine know that if I wanted to take something away from them, they would definitely give it up. It's something that needs to be trained into a puppy when it's a cute little bundle at about eight or nine weeks, not when it's nine or ten months and doesn't want to give something up. Because a hound, by nature, will catch something and take it back and it's his. And therefore he needs to learn that no, it's not his. It actually belongs to the family. They're brilliant with other dogs on the whole. They love the companionship of other dogs. If they're out in the park, they'll go and join other dogs. I have Dachshunds and I used to have Dobermans and they will run and play with just about anything. Cats, it depends very much whether they've seen a cat before. Some of mine, I have to admit, would probably chase a cat, although a couple of them have come face to face with a couple of my cats and then sat there and thought, now what do I do? They're not supposed to live with rabbits, but I do have photos of grands that I've sold that live with a house rabbit. I even have a friend who has chickens and they're perfectly safe with the grand around. However, I think you need to be aware that this is still a hunting dog and the puppy needs to be introduced to other livestock fairly, fairly young, I would think. I personally don't believe any dog should be left for hours and hours and hours on its own. I tend to turn people away if they're out at work all day, even if they say we can pop home at lunchtime. They really will howl if left alone for hours and I don't think it's fair on a breed like this. They can become quite withdrawn if they don't see people for a long time. And my personal feeling is I won't let them go to people who are out at work all day. Two or three hours a day, that's fine. Of course, that, that'll work. And the dog has to become used to that. But to be left all alone, even with someone coming home for an hour at lunchtime and then going off again, I don't think this is the breed that they should even contemplate. In the terms of exercise, I think every dog needs regular exercise. Four hours on a Sunday and nothing all week is absolutely useless for any dog. I think they need a bit of free running, maybe 45 minutes, an hour a day if possible, or certainly a nice long walk of about an hour. And most people, if possible, if they've got a nice sized garden, the dog should have access to a safely fenced garden. But if people want to go for longer than that, once the dog is over a year old, they can run as far as you'd like because they are bred to hunt for long, long periods of time in the winter over very rough terrain. So they're extremely strong and they will keep going. The best kind of exercise is obviously free running, but if you don't have a particularly safe area, it could be a problem. Unfortunately, the dog will chase livestock like a rabbit or something if he sees them. A lot of friends of mine let their dogs run and very often are presented with a rabbit. But if you have an area where the dog can free run, it's really the best way of exercising this dog. However, if you don't, a long flexi lead is fine. A lot of people do agility with their dogs quite successfully and they love it. I personally haven't done it. Some people go out drag hunting People mainly just like to let their dogs run in a safe area or down on a beach or something and a lot of people do let them go and they really are quite good at coming back 90% of the time. However, like all hounds, if they uh, get the scent, sometimes they're off and uh, you just have to wait patiently. They'll probably meet you back at the car if you wait long enough. The Grand Basset is an incredibly clever dog. I may sound a bit biased, but I think he makes most breeds look brain dead. However, because of the intelligence, that doesn't mean they obey immediately. There are other breeds that are terribly clever and love obedience training. This dog is more independent. He knows exactly what you want him to do, but there are times when he will do it when he's ready. He's got better things to do. This doesn't mean he's stupid or he hasn't understood. He absolutely has. Nine times out of ten, they'll do exactly what you want. And the tenth time, 
they suddenly have this extraordinary hound deafness and it's as though you weren't there at all and they completely ignore you. It's not stupidity, it's just the way they are. They're very independent. I've actually known people who've taken the dog out for a 20 minute walk before going to work and then taken them for a longer walk in the evening. And at 19 minutes on the morning walk, the dog has disappeared because he knows, oops, now we're gonna go home. So the morning walk had to be on a flexi lead. We have biscuits in our pocket and at night when we let them all run, we find that by just calling them, they'll all go back to their own run and they get a biscuit for that. They will do it time and time again. The way to get them back is always give them a reward when they come back. Once you've got your hands on the dog, give him a reward, but don't just put him on the lead because he'll just think, oh, I'm not going back, I'll just be put on the lead. If you try this three or four times when they're really young, um, they will then learn to come back for a pat and a biscuit and then they can run off again. And that way you'll be able to get them back a lot easier. The Grand Basset probably enjoys the hunting more than actually toys. I mean, they love tugs. They do have tugs of war. My garden is strewn with bits of vet pen and old tugs and frisbees and balls. And the dogs just play amongst themselves quite happily with them. But I can assure you if a rabbit ran across, they'd forget the toys. If you don't want a groom, don't have one. They need to be thoroughly brushed and combed through at least once a week. Certainly their moustache, their legs, under their ears, under their tails, they need to be thoroughly combed through. It's no good taking them to the grooming parlour every six weeks because they'll be totally tangled by then. Then it'll hurt and you'll end up having them clipped out, which is a shame, really. Some do get a very big coat, but there are some wonderful tools around at the moment that you can buy, and if you use them once a month and groom the dog once a week regularly, plus check his ears and his teeth and his nails, then you really won't have a lot of trouble keeping him in a good condition. I've got 18 of them, and they are all groomed regularly. The best thing to do is get yourself a slicker brush and start very, very early brushing the hair the wrong way and then get yourself a good metal comb and comb it through the right way so that the dog then learns just to stand still and one day a week he knows he's going to be groomed. If you can get through the whole dog with a metal comb, then he's been properly groomed. He may not like his moustache being done or under his chin. He may not like his legs and feet being done. But he needs to learn as a really small puppy before he's got a big heavy coat that this is what happens. There's also a brilliant tool called a coat king, which is like a rake. And if you use that on the coats once a month, it gets all that big top coat out, which is such a labour-saving device. They don't molt like a lot of these shorter coated breeds. However, if you wear a black wool suit, you will get white hairs on you. If they come in muddy, if you let them dry off, most of it will fall as sort of dust. Funnily enough, the more curly the coat, the less they molt. The straighter the coat, which is so much easier to keep, the hair does come out a lot easier but they don't molt like your Labradors, your Beagles, your German Shepherds, your Golden, these dogs that, you know, when they get up from the carpet, you've, you're aware that they've been sitting there. You don't get that with a Basset Griffin Varnier. On the whole, um, luckily, the Grand Basset is quite a healthy dog. They do and can have ear problems if the ears are not kept clean. Because of the fold of the ear and the length of the ear, um, a lot of stuff can stay inside. They get wax in their ears and there is hair growing there, but there's some very good powders that you can puff in and pull the hair out and then clean the ears out thoroughly. And if this is done again on a regular basis, you should be okay. Some young dogs have had joint problems when they're young, but they seem to grow out of it. And unfortunately, like 2% of all dogs, we have had cases of epilepsy. This is something that up until now, we still haven't found the DNA gene, and therefore we can't test for it. But 
we as a club are doing a lot of work with the Animal Health Trust, sending DNA samples of affected dogs, and hopefully in the not too distant future, we will be able to find the gene that causes epilepsy in this breed, which will be a fantastic breakthrough because it would mean that we could test prior to doing matings and eventually, hopefully, breed it completely out. The Basset Griffon Vendien is not for the faint-hearted. If you really want to enjoy a dog that's full of life, full of energy, and you are prepared to groom once a week, and you are prepared for the times when he will go deaf and not come back immediately and run alongside you, then have one because they are the most delightful dogs to own. However, as a youngster, you simply must be firm with them. It's all very well dealing with it when they're two years old, but if you deal with the dog when he's 12, 13, 14 weeks old in a very, very calm but very firm way, he will understand very quickly just how far he can push you and he'll be one of the best dogs you could ever own. If you're looking for a Grand Basset Griffon Vanier, I do suggest that you ring up or look on the website of the BGV Club or ring up the secretary to get a list of breeders. Also, if you go into the Kennel Club website, you will find the assured breeders. And these are people that have had to answer a lot of questions, have had inspections by people from the Kennel Club to make sure they're breeding in the absolute best way. And they're answerable to the Kennel Club and their own breed club if anything goes wrong. Um, assured breeders on the whole know what they're doing and also they will be prepared if something happens and it can break up of a family or somebody having to relocate and sadly other reasons as well that we will be able to take them back and rehome them if something like that should happen. Whereas if you go to somebody who's not a member of the breed club, you know, just be very, very careful. Thank you.